Right, I'll start. So uh, welcome to this virtual tutorial, um, which is on performance analysis on Archer using Craypat, which is a set of uh, well, uh, performance analysis tools, which is what the PAT stands for, that Cray have developed um, that works on Archer or any other Cray system. Uh, this is has a Creative Commons uh, license, so you can um, reuse this material if you want. So basically, um, in this talk, uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about the motivations behind why you would want to do any performance analysis, um, and then start talking about um, Craypat uh, specifically and how it's set out and structured. Um, there's a small demonstration code that I've got that I will um, run Craypat on. So I'll quickly describe how that code works. It should be on the website or should be very soon up there so you can download it and use it yourself if you want to have a go. Then I'm going to look at um, PerfTools Lite, which is the, the kind of most basic um, use of Craypat. And then I'll look at more advanced uses for both sampling and tracing. And then at the end, I'll quickly talk about um, a graphical interface to it because it's mostly um, just command line. So, oops, someone sent me a message. That was from the Go on, that was just me saying that it's available on the oh, web. Sorry right, about that. Great. Okay. No problem. Um, okay. So, uh, why would you want to profile your your code? Um, so, first of all, you might want to know kind of how it's behaving, which which subroutines or functions is it spending most of the time in, um, and also is there any particular load imbalance? So, one of your um, processes is running ten times slower than the others, and you want to know which one it is, which subroutine that this happens in, and ideally get an idea of how you can look at it and how you can fix it. Um, in terms of sampling, so in terms of profiling, there are two main types. There's sampling, where you basically um, look periodically um, and just see which part of the code each process is in at that time, and then you, from that you can get some statistics about things. Or there's tracing, when it actually adds um, extra bits of code into your code that reports on various things, such as when you enter and exit a um, subroutine or a function. So um, in sampling, uh, as I say, it takes samples periodically. With Craypat, it's every 10, 10 milliseconds. Um, and it's, so, so this will just basically, every 10 milliseconds, it will see um, which functions each um, process is in and will report on that. So at the end, you can get some statistics. Um, this is a very good starting point because you just want to quickly know how much time is something doing. And importantly, it's got a very low overhead, so it's roughly 1%, so it isn't going to affect the running of your code um, significantly, and it's very easy to do. Oops, yeah. um, with tracing, say this is much more um, invasive, because you're, you're essentially adding code into your own code, which reports when it enters and exits um, subroutines. So you can actually count the number of times that things have been called, and um, and in theory, measure exactly how much time is spent in each call of each subroutine. Um, and so, yes, um, as you can imagine, this can generate um, incredibly large amounts of data, um, which is not necessarily good because you don't want to create, say, one or two terabytes of data because um, you may not have disk space for that. Um, and also because you're adding code into your own code, um, which then goes and does things and reports the things, it can have quite a high overhead. Um, some examples, if you've got a simple function which just prints hello, and this happens lots of times, if you have um, tracing enabled for that function, then um, every time it goes into that, it has to report that it's entered it, then report it's exited it, and suddenly this function takes a lot more time than it used to because it's being called so often. So you have to take a balance between um, how detailed the measurements are that you need and how much you're going to skew um, the results of the timings in your code. 
Um, so, as a user, you may want you you may be wondering why you would want to profile your code, um, because surely that's something more that a developer would want to do. Because as you can imagine, with developers, they want to make the the code as efficient as possible and iron out any potential problems. Um, however, as a user, you may want to, um, for example, find out um, what what is the optimum number of processes to run your your code on. So you basically want to see how much time is spent sending messages um, compared to how much time is spent actually doing the calculation because you don't want to be running your code in some high number of processes if you're spending 75% of your time sending only 25% of your time actually doing calculation. So um, it's useful for, for both developers and for users to get an idea of what their code's doing um, and how to improve either running it or actually how, how to improve the uh, written code. Uh, so the basic um, run, run pattern of this is you would build your code um, pretty much as normal um, and then you would instrument it um, which is the, essentially it's either preparing it for sampling or for tracing you would then run what Cray call an experiment which is essentially just when you're running your profiling um, on it afterwards you can then look at this profiling data um, and you can use that to either to decide oh I've I've got to go into this code and change something so you can then make changes to the code and start this process again or sometimes you can especially for something like tracing you you can see okay well lots of these functions I don't really care about so you can then change exactly what instrumentation what tracing that you're doing and then re-instrument your code then run it again and you can basically repeat this cycle as much or as little as you want until you're happy or at least more happy with your code than you were at the start. Um, so as I said um, previously profiling can, gen can generate lots of data and can slow down your code execution so you don't really want to be running profiling on something which takes 24 hours to run and runs on say 100,000 cores because you're going to generate lots of data and it's probably going to slow things down. Um, so you ideally want to pick some sort of short example, uh, so something which takes one or two minutes um, to run, but crucially you want something which is representative of a real run that you would be doing. Um, so for example, uh, a nice idea would be some sort of benchmark code which doesn't take, sorry, benchmark problem which doesn't take too long. Um, but does all the things you would expect a full-length production run to be doing. Um, so as I was saying, this, this must be long enough um, so that you spend um, enough time in actual computation. So there's no point in doing something where you essentially um, start your code up, it goes through all of its initialization, it then does one plus one is equal to two, and then finalizes because you're then spending all your time in the start of finalization and another time in the calculation which fundamentally is what you're probably caring about. Um, and also you would want it to include all the I.O. Um, of a normal job. This is um, especially important if you're caring about the performance of your I.O. If it's something which just um, starts, sits and thinks for two hours, then just dumps a data file, it probably doesn't matter too much. Um, but if you are caring about um, how you're reading data, then you obviously need to choose some example which does read and write data. Um, so I just probably mention, um, although in this webinar um, I'm talking about Craypat, um, which is Cray's own one, some others do exist. Some examples are um, Scalaska and Alinea Map. However, there are many others, and all of them work in a very similar way. Um, obviously, the specifics about how you do them is slightly different, but they all give roughly the same kinds of information, um, which you can see below. <clears throat> Okay, so now I'll just quickly say, uh, run through some basic pros and cons of, of Craypat. So I would say firstly that um, Craypat um, can first, it can offer very basic simple sets of information, 
but also you can then get it to give you lots and lots and lots and lots of data, um, uh, an exhaustive amount basically. Um, which leads on to the second point. Um, it's very customizable, both in terms of what you can get it to to trace and to look at, and also what information it can spit out at you. Um, so we will be seeing later that there's um, something called patch report, which produces a kind of a text report of everything. There are so many options for that for displaying different things, um, and um, for this webinar, I can't even begin to go over all of them. But obviously, talk about how you can find out um, all these different options that you can go for. The disadvantages of of Craypat are firstly, it's only available on 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 Cray machines because it is um, Cray software, so it's only available on Archer um, and not on, uh, say, some of the tier two systems which are currently launching or have been launched in the UK. Um, and its graphical user interface isn't vastly useful. It doesn't offer nearly as much information as um, the text reports do. Um, but it is nice to just quickly see um, some kind of basic uh, statistics. And I will look at the graphical interface at the end of this um, webinar. Um, so in terms of Craypat uh, to the user, there are three main parts. There is pat build, which is a tool that you use to instrument all of your code. Um, there's pat report, which essentially generates a report from your um, from the results of your run. And there's apprentice two, which is the graphical interface that I talked about in the previous slide. Um, so recently, uh, Craypat have slightly changed the structure of the modules that you need to load to use um, Craypat. Um, so there are now three modules. There's PerfTools Base, PerfTools Lite, and PerfTools. Um, so it used to be that there was just PerfTools Lite and PerfTools. Um, but now there's this extra PerfTools Base module, which must be loaded before any of the other two modules. Uh, so basically, this PerfTools base contains uh, all, all, all the basic things. So it contains all the manual pages um, and the Apprentice 2 graphical interface. Um, I think it doesn't say this there, but I'm pretty sure it also contains a patch report. But it doesn't contain any of the um, instrumenting parts. Uh, the PerfTools light module um, basically uh, does a sort of quick and dirty um, run. So there aren't that many options to it, but it will just very quickly do a um, sampling um, experiment for your uh, for your 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 code. And it basically it just dumps a reasonably small report at the end of your run. Um, however you can use it to um, look at slightly more data, but it's reasonably light. Oops, a message. Okay, so uh, Harvey just said the problem before is if you had perf tools loaded, it would affect all of your builds, and you might forget that you had done something. Yeah, so basically, if you've got perf tools loaded, one of the problems that you have is um, that it does some things when you're building code and adds in some, for example, with 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 tracing, it'll add in some extra bits of code and do some things which you would not necessarily want for a normal production run. Um, so just in case you've accidentally forgotten to unload this, there's now this PerfTools base module, which allows you access to the man pages and everything else without actually um, having the ability to influence anything you do if you're building or compiling code for yourself. And I'm saying the, the PerfTools module itself, um, it basically contains the, the full suite of software for everything. Um, and allows you to run all your sophisticated <coughs> um, profiling. OK, so just um, a quick aside on this example test code. Um, it's a computational fluid dynamics code that uh, we've written that we use in training for some basic MPI things. So it basically it calculates the flow of fluid within a cavity um, with an inlet in, an, in one side and an outlet on another. Um, and it's also capable of calculating um, 
the 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 inviscid flow where it's ideal or um, viscid flow where you've got um, vorticity and vortices and such things just essentially just adds some extra computation steps in um, so essentially it solves Poisson's e equation um, for the uh, stream function which uh, is a scalar field which gen which describes the the fluid flow and because of that it uses spatial gradients so you need to have um, message passing to swap halo cells so it contains some MPI in the code it's a reasonably simple code and this is available on the website um, next to the link for launching this webinar that we're in um, and the source code is available in both C and Fortran they give exactly the, the same results out um, but just you can use whichever language you feel most comfortable with um, so yes, yeah, so as I was saying, uh, because it uses spatial gradients, you have to swap halo cells. So there's some MPI um, send receives in there, um, and it's paralyzed in the x direction in C or the y direction in Fortran, just because C and Fortran are um, row major and column major, respectively, or it might be the, the other way around. I always get them mixed up. Uh, yes, yeah, so this this can be found on the web pages. Um, just some instructions for running it. Um, if you want to. There are also um, some um, batch, batch scripts included in the, the, the files, but um, you, there are three arguments to the code. One is the scale, which describes the number of um, cells that you basically want to run the, the code on, so essentially the, uh, something like the, the resolution of your code. This num, num iter, which is the number of iterations that you wish to run, uh, so if you make that number bigger, then the, the code runs for longer. And this RE, which is the Reynolds number, which you want to be between 0 and 3.7, it essentially describes how much uh, viscosity you want the fluid to have. So if the Reynolds number is 0, there's no viscosity, and you have no uh, no vortices. And if it's non-zero, then you have vortices. Uh, and if you want, you can plot the, the output of this code uh, with GNU plot, and you can get... Um, basically these two different um, regimes for if you've got no vorticity or if you've got vorticity. This is just if you want to have to play around with the code. Afterwards, okay, so now I'm going to go through um, three different uh, things. So first I'm going to talk about Perftil's light, which is the, the, the most basic um, way of using Craypat. And then I'll talk about um, a more detailed, so this, this uses sampling, but I will then go and talk about a more detailed sampling experiments you, you, um, using perf tools, and then finally um, I'll talk about tracing. Um, so for perf tools light, you want to load the perf tools base module, uh, and then load the perf tools light module. Um, you then would build your executable as normal. However, um, whilst you're doing this, perf tools light will then um, do some instrumenting to this binary that you produce. So the binary that comes out has been instrumented for um, running uh, your profiling experiment. Uh, and then you basically just run this as normal, so you submit it in a PBS job. Uh, and then at the end of your job, it will um, append to the end of your output um, some basic uh, statistics. Um, and you can also look at data later on with the Apprentice 2 graphical interface, which I'll talk about at the end of this webinar. So I'll now give a basic demonstration of this. Um, let's see. So I will log into Archer. Okay, so um, this is essentially the uh, structure of the files that you, you can get, except for this pre-made um, directory, which is one that I've run everything uh, beforehand, just in case that uh, the, the Archer queues are too slow or something, and we don't want it to sit doing nothing. So you could go into, say, the uh, Fortran one. So this, and you can see there's some Fortran source code, a make file, and your PBS script. So first I want to load my Craypat modules. 
at Paris. Those base and then light. Okay, so now you just want to make your um, uh, you want to compile the code using make and this should say at the end once it's done it sometimes takes a while yeah it should say it's creating the um, executable So here, uh, just to say, it says this uh, thing here, a, a maximum of seven functions from group AIO will be traced. Um, as far as I, I can understand, this isn't explicitly doing tracing. It's just because these are uh, functions which are basically um, are external to the code that we've written and they're on the create system. Oops. Hello. Oh, yeah. Yes, uh, David's just put a message about the use of the dash T flag. Um, so, um, although this says that these will be traced, I think it's just warnings because there are these functions which um, are supplied by Archer, or are supplied on Archer by Cray, and they've got special um, tracing things in them. So it just throws these up. So now we basically want to submit this job. I'll just use a short queue. And so this will now hopefully run my code. If it's running, this should only take a few seconds to run. Hopefully. And we can look at the results. It's taking out longer than usual. Okay, since this is running, I will just cheat and go to the ones I've done before. So here. So here, if we look at the output of the one I did, uh, um, so all this stuff here um, is from the code that I have. And at the end here, we then have this Craypack Light Performance Statistics and this uh, will give you some information. So it's running on four MPI ranks, four per node, uh, single threads. Um, it gives you the time for the process, the uh, memory that's been used, and some various other bits of information. And here in this table one, it gives you an idea of the amount of time that's been spent in, in this case, there's just uh, two functions that are being shown. Uh, or Routines, I guess. Um, so, 83% of the time has been spent in this function called um, Jacobi Step Fort, which is actually running the the calculation. Um, and 14.6% of the time has been spent in this CFD, which is the the main program. And in this, it will also give you. It says here it says the the number of samples which were collected for each one. Um, here is the imbalance samples so um, for each different process the, uh, Im the, the imbalance of samples and the amount of um, imbalance that we're finding in the uh, runtime for each process. Um, this can give some observations and suggestions um, on MPI but in this case because it's running one node it's not giving us anything and then this also gives statistics on the, um, the files that we've written um, and some other things. And then, yeah, there's some more output down here uh, so you can get information on the call tree and various other things using patch report. But I will cover patch reports uh, in the next part of the talk. Okay, so I'm just come up here. Okay, back to the presentation now.
Okay, uh, so now we'll look at the more in-depth sampling, um, which is using the Perf Tools module itself rather than Perf Tools Light. So this will give a bit more information than uh, the small amount of output we had previously. Uh, so this time it's slightly different because it doesn't automatically instrument the binary that you've made. You've got to instrument it afterwards with this um, pat build um, command. So in this case, we're giving it no, no, um, no, no arguments beyond just uh, the name of the executable that we've pre-built. Um, you should note you want to be um, linking separately to your compiling. Uh, so this basically means you want to be you want to produce objects, and then at the end you want to link all your objects together. Um, this instrumenting. Uh, creates a new binary called CFD plus PAT um, and this is one that you want to use in your um, batch script for submitting your jobs. And once it's finished it produces this file, this CFD plus PAT plus some number XF. Uh, this contains all the sampling data that you've used. Um, you can then generate a report with this using the PAT reports tool and then this will this out um, to your uh, terminal, uh, lots of information, uh, but you can put this into a file using the dash o and then some, some file name um, argument so you have it for, for later. And I'll just do a demonstration of this. Okay, so I will just got time to swap out in this case so perf tools um right tools then I want to go into I'll go into this um F was just for trying one again. So I'm going to just um clean this and then make again. This time it should not say anything um, about building, uh, about instrumenting the binary at the end. It didn't say anything and then we'll have this uh, CFD. Um, executable here and then we use pat pat build and then cfd so this is now um, essentially is preparing this to be uh, to have something run on it which should take a few seconds and then at the end it will produce um, this um, an executable cfd plus pat so if we look again we now have this CFD plus PAT. So this is the executable that we wish to use when we run our job. So you have to remember to edit your submit script. In this case, to run CFD plus PAT. And then submit this job. Save time, I'll go to my version. Um, so once this is finished, it should produce this um, CFD plus part um, and then some numbers .xf file, which is uh, the one which contains all the information for your report. So then you can do your screen. So you can do part report. This and this will generate a, uh, a lot of information. Where is it? Here we go. Yeah. Um, so this uh, gives some similar information to before, and it gives a similar table that we had um, previously. Uh, so it's saying 83% of the time was spent in this Jacobi 
step forward as before, 1.6% of the time was spent in, um, in your MPI uh, functions. And then there's lots of other tables. There's this one here, which gives a sort of call tree, which actually says roughly which lines most of the time is being spent on. So in Jacobi step vort, it's spending most of its time on lines 22 uh, and 26. And then in your main code, it's spending most of the time on lines 276 and 280. So immediately, if you've got some code and you want to want to optimize it, if you're finding that, that half of all the time is being spent on a single line, then you would want to at least look, you would want to look at that line and see if you can um, make it quicker somehow by optimizing it. Uh, and there's all sorts of other information, uh, hardware counter data, some basic things. I can give you an idea of your uh, machine's performance. Even gives you some energy output now, which I think is reasonably new. Uh, your wall clock time, uh, how much memory each of your processes were using. Uh, see, it's saying that it's um, a sampling experiment with an interval of 1,000 microseconds or 10 milliseconds. And yeah, there's all sorts of information contained in this report. Yeah, so Harvey has just said, that the, the line hits are approximate because the code may have been optimized, but this generally gets you to relevant bits of the code. So uh, yes, this isn't um, necessarily completely exact, but it will give you roughly where about in the code you're spending most of your time. Yep. Okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Uh, so you, the eagle-eyed of you may have noticed that um, two, oh actually Pat Reforce doesn't produce these files, um, that two other files have been, oh no it does, sorry, two other files have been spat out, um, a .ap2 file and a .apa file. Um, this ap2 file um, is used for the graphical interface and use that as an input to graphical interface uh, which will then be able to give you some um, graphs and charts and some other things based on your code's execution. And this APA file um, contains some hints about how you could uh, want to trace your uh, trace your your experiment. Well, how you could instrument your code for a tracing experiment. Um, so this is where most of the options in Pat Build come in, which is for um, all your different tracing options. Uh, so there are lots and lots and lots of them, which is why this APA file is useful because it gives suggestions. So essentially, once you've run the sampling thing, um, Craypat kind of tries to guess uh, what the best options would be for a tracing experiment. So it basically uh, looks at the things that most time is being spent in and aims at tracing them. Uh, so there are lots of different options. There are you can set trace groups so you can tell it to trace things such as MPI, um, any uh, linear algebra libraries that you're using such as LAPAC or BLAS. Um, you can trace OpenMP, uh, and you can trace functions from your own code. Um, so you can either specify to trace only specific functions, or you can specify to trace um, all of the functions, which is not a good idea because you can generate lots of data and massively skew the results. Um, so as I was saying, generally it's very complicated to set up a tracing experiment, um, but this is where this APA file that's been produced by your sampling thing helps because it gives you somewhere to start and gives you sensible suggestions. So you can run that and then if you want to change something then you can um, modify that as you see fit. Uh, yes, it's the same sort of thing here. Um, so this time when you use pat build, you use this dash capital O um, and then your APA file. What this does is it basically reads in 
this APA file and basically appends everything in there um, as if there were arguments to this pat build um, code. Uh, and some of the, the default things that it does, it traces any MPI calls, it gathers the default hardware counter um, information, um, it traces functions um, within the user's code which have uh, more than 1% of the samples so it's not going to trace something very short which is essentially never used um, and it doesn't trace very small functions so as to minimize the overhead. Uh, yeah. um, so you instrument this, uh, you then submit this new instrumented um, so and then this will produce um, a CFD plus APA um, plus number. Uh, sorry, uh, CFD plus APA executable. So you want to modify your job submission script to use this, and then um, submit this. Um, and then later on, you can look at the uh, the report and information inside it. So I will now demonstrate this. So this should now finish and there should be a .xf file. Set. Oh yes, yeah, okay. So uh, I'll just have to quickly This is the report for the previous one that we've seen, but you need to use this because it should now be this .apa file here. What I want to do is I want to do hat build dash o at capital O and then So this um, is now using the recommendations inside this .apa file to um, trace, uh, to set up um, a tracing um, experiment code. Actually, what I should do, if we just look at this, uh, if we look at this APA file. Um, it says at the top that you that you can edit it as desired and tells you how to use it. So if in doubt, you can just look inside this file. And so these are essentially the sorts of arguments that it gives you. Um, it says you tracing this MPI library. Oops. Um, it says the, the user defined functions to trace. Oops. Uh, so here it's tracing two. So this W which enables the user defined functions. Then it, it traces um, this Jacobi step fort, which um, as I've seen before, used about 80 about 80 percent, and then it traces the main code here, and then it produces the CFD um, plus APA file at the start, which you should be able to see in here. So you just edit your script. And then this will then run. But I will again sheet the base one I made earlier. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so now we can look at um, I'm going to patch report make sure we do it for the correct one. Uh, if you look at the XF file, it will generate a massive report compared to the previous ones. Yep. So, um, gives you all the notes and tables. 
So um, with the previous one, it was talking about samples, and it said the number of samples that um, were found for each um, call. But in this one, it actually gives you the number, the total number of calls. Uh, so in this case, um, there are 550,000 calls over the entire program. That was 50,001 calls uh, from the, the, the user code of which there were 50,000 of this Jacobi step fork, uh, essentially because um, I requested it to do 50,000 iterations and one call of the main program, as you would expect. Um, and then in terms of MPI calls, there were 500,031. So these um, basically turns out where your MPI send receives. So there are roughly 10 um, for each uh, user call. And you can look at some more information. And again, you've got your your imbalances and such. Uh, seeing there's a big imbalance for MPI finalize uh, because essentially uh, your first process does all the work and all the others just stop at the end. Uh, table two will give you um, all sorts of calls of different things. to give you the, the, the wall time, all sorts of other things. And it will give you for each um, function which you were uh, tracing. So exactly how much time has been spent in everything, the time of the imbalance uh, between your different processes. All sorts of information, MPI sync. And finalize and your MPI and how you send receives. And then your load balancing for your MPI messages. Here's so you see the amount of time that's been used for each one. And there's all sorts of information you want. The size of all the messages that have been sent. Um, in total, the average message size, the number of messages, how much time has been done doing all this, and then all sorts of uh, extra stats, most things that you probably wouldn't necessarily want to know, but it's there if you need to know it, and then all your 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 high memory time and your wall clocks, and it says here just a kind of as a summary we we. To the trace here, all the settings that are used for this trace, all the runtime variables, and everything. So as you can see, this gives a lot of information, um, which you can then look at and you can use to get um, an idea of what your code is doing. Let's go back to here. Yeah. Okay. So just quickly with this patch report. So as you can see from that from the last one, it was a very large um, file containing lots of information, uh, some of which you probably don't care about, um, some, and some of which you may actually want um, far more detail than what you've been getting before. So uh, what you can do um, is, so this is just using the, the, the default, what you can actually do is add some arguments to this patch report um, thing and it will then produce um, a report according to the arguments that you want. So you may have noticed uh, when I was looking through that that there were some sort of comments that were talking about um, the options applied by this table, uh, like what it says down here. So you can basically um, you can add all these all these arguments to patch report, then it will generate um, a report with just information that you're asking for and not all this extra stuff if you want it or need it. Um, but generally, yeah, I, I just generally I'd run pad report first to get everything. Then, if you need something else, then you can um, go in and get more more data. Uh, and there's also sometimes a, set, a section called observations and suggestions, which can give you some uh, suggestions on both um, some um, extra tracing um, experiments or even on ways you can improve your code, perhaps. 
Uh, and just also with with Craypat, um, there's lots of information, lots of different settings. Uh, so uh, one of the best things to do is look at all of its man pages. And there's this command called pat help, which can help you as well, which you have access to on Archer. Okay, and then finally, I'm just going to talk about uh, the Apprentice 2 graphical interface, um, which reads in uh, these .ap2 files, which are produced by Pat Report. And then you can use these to then visualize some information uh, graphically. Um, it is possible to do a much more detailed application trace and give you lots of lots more information if you set this environment variable in your submit script pat rt summary equals zero. However, this uh, generates lots and lots and lots of, of information. So takes, say, your .xf file, which currently is uh, a few megabytes, and makes it um, several gigabytes. So use this with, with caution. Only do this if you really, really need um, all the extra information. So you can run um, Apprentice to in Archer via X Windows, providing you've got X Windows forwarding, or you can also get the binaries for this, um, which you can find on Archer um, at this um, at this location if you want. Uh, so here's a screenshot of it. Um, its interface looks a bit antiquated, but it does the, the job fine. And I will do a demonstration of it now. So to and it's CFD plus APA plus dot. Oh, and I forgot to form my X windows. Oh, yeah, I know. I just forwarded that. What's going on? Okay, so this is officially not working. However, as I said before, you, there's the executables um, on Archer, which you can access yourself. So I will just go ahead and launch it locally. Um, so what I've done is I've copied the files across to my computer, um, but it's also possible for you to uh, it's also possible for you to remotely connect to Archer through Apprentice 2. So I will just pull this up on screen now. Okay. So in here I can basically go and open and then I'm in desktop made tracing and this one here. Is this going to resize? Yeah. Good. So first uh, we're given this sort of dashboard with some basic sorts of information. Um, so it gives you this uh, this graph showing essentially how much time is spent in the computation, which is about 95%. Uh, the programming model, this is essentially uh, your your MPI or whichever way that you're doing it. So I guess if it's OpenMP, it'll give you some OpenMP things. Uh, how much data is moved from process to process, your memory usage and some function information, some information on, on your, your load and balance in your uh, how often things are being done. So you can click on this, and this will then give you the sort by the number of calls which are made and the amount of time each thing is spent in. So you see, again, here, basically 75% is 
is used in uh, this Jacobi step fort function. And I don't, yeah, and you can click on this and you get an idea of the load balance, although it's not that exciting. If you click on MPI, finalize, there's more of a load and balance here because your rank zero ends up doing a lot of work after everything else is finished. And CFT also thinks it has a load and balance, yeah, where rank zero is doing more work than the others. Uh, can I click on this as well? Yeah, it just gives you all the information of your load and balance on everything. If you click on these, you can click this load and balance thing here and you get this graph, which um, it just is essentially a bit like a call tree. Uh, so CFD is your main code, and then there's two things that you can trace. There's Jacobi, step vort, and your MPI finalize. Uh, so the length of this bar is a measure of how much time is spent in that bit of the code. And I think the yellow bar is the imbalance, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, but you can get information on this somewhere. I can't remember exactly how, but it, it, just say, it, it says it somewhere where things, oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, and then and here is this little table to the left. It gives you the time, the imbalance, and the time for the imbalance. And what else is there? Activity report. This is for each of your um, each of your processes. So zero, one, two, and three. Um, it can give you a kind of chart of how much time is being spent in different things. So in sync, your data transfer, read writes, user time, and other traced. And then it's for overview. That's the call tree you've seen before. So I mean, this isn't quite as useful as the um, patch report because it is a bit more difficult to get some information. But what you do get is graphical, so you can have quite a quick look and you can get all the hardware counters as well in here. And this mosaic report, which I think is saying what sends to where. Yes, the things sent to their neighbours, but nothing else. Uh, yes, and you can also... Yes, uh, so uh, two messages, uh, one from Harvey and one from TN. Very. Um, yes, yeah, so you can also look at the text report within the app. Um, and if you set this summary, variable I mentioned previously, then you can get extra views in this display. So I can try, oops, I can try and click the text report. I think last time I tried this, I managed to crash it uh, when I tried it locally. Yeah, I've crashed it. Um, for some reason it crashes on my Mac, but it doesn't crash if you run it on Archer directly. Oh, and also Harvey's just said he would, rec uh, he would recommend that you load the latest PerfTools modules rather than the defaults on Archer. Uh, so I'm guessing the defaults are a little bit out of date. I could have a look. Uh, yeah, so the default on Archer is 6.3 but the most recent version available is 6.4.5, I think. Yes. Um, so you can load the most recently available ones, which I guess would give you slightly more information or better information, and this has completely crashed, which happened to me before. This will basically just give you exactly the same reports that you had previously that I showed you in the terminal. Uh, Okay, and, and uh, that's the end. Uh, so I've basically shown you, I've gone through, um, I've talked about why that we would want to do profiling 
uh, as I'm talked about the uh, Craypat in general, uh, I've walked through uh, the kind of basic use of it using Perfto's light and then using Perfto's both for a sampling run and then for a uh, more detailed um, tracing run. So generally what you would want to do is you would want to do a sampling run to get a quick idea of what's going on and then if needed run a tracing run for more in-depth information. Um, so if anybody has any questions uh, then uh, feel free to ask.